Bibles and turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1. God wants us to know something. Somebody say we better be knowing this. I can't for the world of me think why preachers ain't preaching more. Amen. About knowing these things. Amen. Listen to this. Uh, 2 Timothy 3 verses 1. This no, some ought to say, beware of. This is a message of awareness, but a message of beware concerning this. This know also that in the last days, some ought to say the last days. Now the last days here are not the last days of what we would concern the last days of Israel or the last days, you know, of the end for us after the great tribulation of course the rapture takes place before that revelation 4 verse 1 john heard a voice like a trumpet saying come up hither then in revelation 5 through revelation 18 the church is assembled around the throne of god giving him praise all the way to revelation 19 and 1 they're still heard around the throne singing glory to the lord salvation to the lord praise and honor forever and ever and ever but then as jude prophesied in verse 16 of the book of Jude, amen, or verse 14, I believe it is, he prophesied and said, the Lord is seen coming when 10,000 of his saints. So then we find that is when Revelation 19, he comes back, he's, he's vestures dipped in blood because that is his wrath, his judgment against the armies of the earth and the Antichrist that exalted themselves against his kingdom, his gospel, and against his people Israel. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? In Revelation 19, that is the fulfillment of the Ezekiel 38 Gog and Magog that war amen that finalized well God with the word of his mouth destroys all the armies that are in advance against Israel and God's people amen his kingdom amen and so we see he's come to judge and make war he's not coming in that moment to rapture the church he already did that amen when he comes in the clouds that's where he's coming at Amen. First Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. He calls the dead in Christ up out of their graves. And those of us that are alive and remain are caught up together with them. Somebody say it's the rapture. That's the catching away, the catching up of the church. Amen. Then there is three and a half years that is going to seem like total peace on this earth. After the chaos they get over concerning the rapture, people's going to say uh, UFOs have come. That's why there's so much talk about unidentified flying objects. But I'll go ahead and tell you the rapture is going to be a bunch of identified flying objects. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. But they're going to say that. They're going to excuse that away because people's going to be missing everywhere. Hey, Amen. Can you imagine the amber alerts that's going to go out and they're going to even know what to type in there? Hey, Amen. It's going to shut down everything. I mean, people, unmanned vehicles, planes, trains, you name it. I mean, total chaos and just craziness going on on this earth. People's going to miss and just like that. They're going to find their clothes, going to find where they were, but they're no longer there. Amen. People's going to run to the church and scream wanting to get in. They didn't have time to go to church this Sunday morning, but the Sunday morning after the rapture, everybody's going to want to beat the doors down and come in. And sadly, they're going to find some folks still in that church. They're going to find some preachers still in that pulpit. Amen. And there'll be people that'll get saved during the great tribulation, even after the rapture, but every one of them will have to become martyrs, amen, for the preaching of the gospel and their faith in Jesus Christ, they'll be beheaded, amen, but somebody say, why wait till then, leave on the first trip, amen, because how are we going to come back with him in Revelation 19 if we weren't first caught up with him, because when you study Revelation, you study chapter 5 all the way through 18, no matter what's going on on the earth, the church is seen in heaven. The believers. That's why Paul said in 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 1, he said, I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord and our gathering together unto him. Paul talked about the church gathering together in that meeting in the air. That's why when we come to church down here, we call it the gathering. Amen. So don't think for one moment you can forsake the gathering here and think you're going to be involved in that gathering when the rapture takes place. People's deceived. I'm telling you. We gather here because we're in expectation of that gathering that's coming. All your old cemeteries, not none of some of your newer ones possibly or, you know, some that's just family oriented. But when you look at the old cemeteries, the public cemeteries, church cemeteries, amen, you'll find every one of the headstones facing the eastern sky. Most all of them. Why? Because they believed he's coming again. And they believed just what the Bible says, the dead in Christ going to rise first. Amen. So why not just go ahead and 
face them to where they're going when he comes. Praise God. Hallelujah. What a hope is that? That's amazing, ain't it? Hallelujah. But then in Revelation 19, we're seen, not only is Jesus seen on the white horse, but the armies of heaven with him. Come on, somebody. Amen. We come riding with him. Praise God. Back to judge and make war. And according to 1 Corinthians 6, I believe it's verse 2 and 3, it says we're going to judge the world and we're going to get to judge angels. Oh, glory to God. Somebody shout, we're going to be right there with him when he throws the devil into the pit. Praise God and the beast and the false prophet. Praise God. What a day that's going to get to be. Oh, I don't want to miss it. Praise God. We're coming to rule and reign with him. Amen. And so uh, we, we see all this, this happening. But the last days here when it says in 2 Timothy 3, 1, somebody say this also know in the last days. Now he's going to talk, we're going to talk about the perilous times and tell you why. Because the perilous times are because of the people in those times. Uh, so, but the last days is talking about the last days of the church before the rapture. Now, many would argue and say, well, you know, the book of Revelation, according to the timeline of the Bible being written, weren't even wrote yet, weren't even revealed yet when Paul's preaching this. It don't matter. It's still the word of God. It made it in the book. Amen. So that's why we combine these two together. But somebody say in the last days. This means the days right before the rapture of the church. God said this is how it's going to look. Now you're about to hear how it's going to look. And I'll go ahead and tell you. Your soothsayers. Amen. And your fan club. Crowd catering. Feel good preachers. They're not telling you this. They're telling you about how better it's going to be. And oh how wonderful it's going to be here. And all oh, there. I mean I'm telling you. And it's all about here and now. Nothing about hereafter. Hallelujah. But he said know this also that in the last day. Somebody say right before the rapture. This is how it's going to look. So when I start showing you how this is going to look. I want you to look, look over here and say. Somebody say with me. An endurance for the end. Some's going to say, well, why in the world are you preaching about how bad it is and, and the bad and the bad people and the bad things and all the darkness and do 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 Because we're not going to end on that. The reason we're going to look into it, first of all, it's in the word of God. And God said, I want you to know this. I want you to be aware of it. I want you to be aware of it. But it's going to be encouraging to the saint to endure. Amen. And it's going to help you not become in the category of these 19 different, I call it 19 sinful actions of mankind just before the rapture of the church. This is how, hey amen, the crowd, the world, the majority is going to appear. Hello? Anybody here, Holy Spirit? Uh, he said, I want you to know this. Somebody say, perilous times shall come. Somebody say, perilous times. The word perilous literally means dangerous. Dark and dangerous shall come. Somebody say, they're still coming, but they've been here. Perilous times, dangerous times. The word dangerous or perilous there actually also means hazardous. Look at your neighbor and say, we're not the dukes of hazard, but we better be the disciples of hazard. Amen. Because Acts 15 and 26, it said that the apostles of the early church hazarded their own lives, put their own life in jeopardy to preach the gospel. Some ought to say, welcome to the disciples of hazard. Well, brother, you know, it's getting a little dangerous to go to church. Get saved. Hello? Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? We, we've been so pacified in this Western society and in the lukewarm church that everything's about convenience. And long as there's no threat of the weather, no threat. We, I'm telling you, one drop of water, hey man, that the meteorologists will predict 10 days before the service will keep people out of church. And at most time, it only rains sunshine. Hallelujah. Do you think for one minute, amen, some dictator or some threat of a war or some threat of whatever, amen, is going to, amen, keep those saints home? You sure enough know it. They're going to stay home because if a drop of water can keep them from the house of God, any little thing, what they say on the news can keep them from the house of God. Don't you think for a moment that they're going to, amen, make it to the house of God, amen, when some law is passed and says you can't worship no more. You can't believe this book like you used to. Amen. Not the apostles and the believers and the disciples in the early church in the book of Acts. No wonder. You know, everybody loves to superficially shallow preach about all the signs and the wonders in the book of Acts. 
That's all it's about is all the miracle signs and wonders. But let me tell you what's not mentioned, and I'm going to be the one that mentions what's not mentioned. The reason they had so many miracle signs and wonders is because they were persecuted. Some of them were being martyred. Read it in the word of God. Even in Acts 12, God rescues Peter when the church prays. But then there's another disciple. Hey man, he has his life taken. Why God rescued one and didn't rescue? I don't know, but God's God. Amen. Stephen, mighty preacher with signs and wonders, but he gave his life for preaching the gospel and displaying those wonders. And those apostles of that early church, they didn't none of them become famous until after they were dead. And most of them gave their life for the preaching of the gospel, including Paul, the apostle Peter, even history tells us that he was crucified and he refused to be crucified upright. Amen. Out of humility to his Christ that hang on the cross for him. He, they had crucified him upside down. Amen. For the preaching of the gospel. And we got people, amen, glory to God, that's scared of any little old thing that's said on the news or whatever. Amen. And they can't make it to the church. They can't make it to the, you know, the, the work of God. Amen. Where are they going to be at when it really gets perilous? Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? Oh, glory to God. And I'm telling you, these hours are here. And so the perilous times means dangerous times. Some ought to say times where man becomes fierce and overpowered and by darkness where they have no conscience. It's seared with a hot iron. First Timothy 4, 2 says they show no remorse. It literally means a time when humans act inhuman. What's that mean, Inhuman. It's not even meaning they act like an animal. Don't, don't sabotage animal, the animal kingdom that low. Because we all got some animals and they ain't as crazy as some people we've met. You know? So it's not talking about inhuman like an animal. It's talking about inhuman meaning in the spirit. Someone say it's about demon possession. When you read 2 Timothy 3 1, know this also in the last days, perilous times shall come. Someone say the perilous times, the dangerous times, someone say are demonic times. The times of the demon possessed. That's why people, amen, act inhuman. They act and do things demonically with no sense of remorse. They don't care. Amen. Some might say it's demon possession. You're about to see about demon possession right here in the latter times. Amen. And I'll go ahead and tell you something. If you compromise with darkness from a pulpit, you will not cast out the darkness when it's time to pray darkness out. Some might say the only power we have over darkness, devils, amen, is to call them out. Because if you don't call them out now, you won't cast them out then. Amen. So listen to this. He said, and here's why all this is going to come in the last days. Some might say the last days right before the church is raptured. The parrot's going to get dangerous. Now, this ain't going to be the great tribulation. I wouldn't want to be here if God tells us it's going to get dangerous before the rapture. Who in the world want to be here during the great tribulation? Because it'll exceed anything. It'll make this look like, it'll make 2 Timothy 3, 1 look like a choir boy on a Sunday morning. Because the first three and a half years after the rapture of the tribulation, after they explain away the rapture and say UFOs and everything else and explain it all away and people, you know, get over that for, you know, what level they can get over that. Amen. Then that world leader that, you know, the Antichrist, he gonna, he's he going to have that one world government, one world currency, one world religion. Amen. And it's going to seem like blessing and peace. And he's going to seem like the answer to everything. But then in the middle of that three and a half years, he's going to break covenant. Come on, somebody, because the devil's a liar. Amen. And, and it's going to change from that point on for the next three and a half years. It's going to be hell on earth. And the judgments that's going to come from heaven. And friend, I'll go ahead and tell you, the Bible's very clear. God has saved us from the wrath to come in First Thessalonians. I believe it's two, maybe verse eight somewhere. Somebody say, God has saved us from the wrath to come. Amen. God ain't going to leave us here and pour out judgment. Even in the old covenant, when God brought judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah, he brought Lot and his family out before he did it. Now, Lot's wife turned back and she was judged with them because of it. Genesis 19, 26. Amen. When you find, you know, in the land of Egypt, when God sent Moses and delivered his people out, praise God. Before God delivered them out, they plied the blood. It's called the Passover in Exodus 12. Jesus is our Passover that's a sacrifice for us. 
course, 1 Corinthians 5, 7. So Jesus is the fulfillment of this. He is the Christ, the Messiah. He's the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, John 1, 29. But when they applied the blood to the door lintels of the house, some ought to say death passed over them. The judgment passed over them. All right? Praise God. Amen. And God delivered them out of Egypt. But even before delivering them out of Egypt, he kept them in the land of Goshen. And wherever the judgments fell, they didn't touch them there. The judgments come on the enemy, not God's people. Somebody say God delivered them out before the final judgment. Amen. Uh, so, uh, uh, Revelation 3 verse 10, he said, because you've kept the word of my patience, you've endured to the end. Simply what he was saying. He said, so will I keep you from the hour of temptation or judgment that shall come upon the entire world to judge everybody on earth. Somebody say, God's going to keep us from that because we have kept his word. We've followed him. Hey Amen. We're going to be took out of here before that happens. God, even the old world in Noah's day, before God, amen, God had them prepare an ark and God rescued them. As the judge waters rose, come on somebody, the ark rose too. Come on, anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Somebody say the church is going to rise. Then the judgment's coming. Amen. Hallelujah. God ain't going to judge us with the world. No, that's what the blood was shed on the cross for. The Passover lamb of God's blood shed so we could be delivered from that judgment. Amen. Somebody give him praise. He's delivered us from the wrath to come. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. People talk about, well, boy, I have walked up to the counter before and it ring up $6.66. Ah! I can't tell you the women I've had working behind a counter at the store do that. Ah! everybody in the store. One lady did that one night. It was after 12 a.m. in the morning. I was coming back and preaching revival somewhere. Rung up $6.66. She slammed the door to the door. Ah! Oh, God. She said, go buy something else. I said, you gonna pay for it? <laughs> she said, yeah, I'll pay for it. Because I know I said, man, what are you doing? She said, you don't see how much that is, $6.66. I went laughing. I said, you scared of $6.66. I said, I'm married to a woman that was born six, six sixty-eight. Hello? I said, you scared of that number? She said, yeah. I said, ask yourself why you scared of it. She couldn't think of nothing. I said, you scared of it because you ain't rapture ready. I said, that's in Revelation 13. The mark of the beast that's going to be given out after the rapture. The church ain't on earth. Amen. Oh, Lord. She said, you ain't afraid of it? I said, no, because I'll be in heaven with the church Amen. when all that happens. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I said, by the way, study your Bible. Amen. His name's going to be in my forehead. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And so then I went preaching the gospel to her and I refused to buy nothing else. She even tried to get I said, I ain't buying nothing else. I said, ring it up and give it to me. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm washed in the blood. I ain't scared of that. Amen. So, so God delivers us from the wrath to come. But somebody say, this is the way it's going to look in the last days, right before the rapture. Perilous times shall come. Y'all heard the story in 2020 when the demon possessed man sit right over there legally carried a firearm. Amen. Praise God. And had a permit to do so. But that night the demons manifested in him. He squirmed around, looked around and his family didn't even know what he was doing. He comes up here. It's still viral on Facebook. Amen. Cast demons out of him. Amen. And his testimony off camera afterwards was uh, the demons were telling me to take my gun and go up there and shoot you. Hello. I can't afford not to preach the gospel. Amen. Need to say when everybody left here that night, Marvin hung around in the father's house giving him praise. Amen. I've told policemen that and they've just sit over their jaws dropping. Amen. I'm not making this stuff up. Some might say we're in dangerous times. We're in dangerous times. But somebody say we serve a deliverer. Amen. He said, and here's why the times are going to be so dangerous, so hazardous, so perilous. He said, for men shall be lovers of them own selves. I've literally had people in, the, in these altars. It's been a little while now, but I've had literally people come to altars and say, pray for me that I don't do the bad things I have voices telling me to do to other people. Hello? Everybody ain't hearing the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost ain't telling nobody to murder nobody. The Holy Ghost ain't telling people to murder themselves. That's a demon. 
Satan comes to kill and destroy. Amen. Jesus come to get life more abundantly, John 10, 10. Satan possessed uh, Judas. Jesus said he had a devil in him, John 6, verse 70. What did Judas do? He went out and hung himself. Some ought to say the Holy Ghost never tells anybody to commit suicide. Demons do. That's the devil's doings. He don't tell them to harm others. The Holy Spirit don't. He don't tell them to harm themselves. That's demons. People that's cutting themselves. That's a demon. Hello? Anybody here Holy Spirit? Some ought to say alcoholism is not a disease. It's a demon. Drug abuse ain't a disease. It's a demon. It's, it's, it's a form of witchcraft. I'm not going to get into all the study of that. Hallelujah. No wonder they advertise on their buildings with their signs. Spirits. We're not talking about mineral spirits either. Hello? Some of it's probably stronger than that. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, uh, so men shall be, here it is. Here's why. Men shall be lovers of them own selves. Satan needs people to be obsessed with themselves. This is the, the worst form of idolatry. When it says people are lovers of them own selves, somebody say they worship themselves. They're all about themselves. So God says the perilous times in the last days right before the church that's going to come, this is why. This is the repercussion. Why? Because people love themselves, their plans, their agendas, their opinions, their ways, their wants, their desires above God. They put themselves for, they are the idol that they worship. They live for themselves. All self-indulgent, all about me. Amen. Notice what follows, covetousness. Now when you study that in Colossians 3, 4, it says idolatry is as the iniquity or the sin of coveting. Uh, so we know that's the last of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not covet. Somebody say that's a lust. For what somebody else has got. I always want more. Always greed. I got to always have something more. So when all you do is live for you. All you're going to do is live to pamper you. Whatever you want. That's what you're going to put first. That's your God. Amen. And so it starts causing the heart to covet. Amen. And leads people into places of the love of money. Which by the way is the root of all evil. Think about it. First Timothy 6 and 10. When people love money more than they love God, that is the root of evil. People will do anything for a dollar. They'll lie, they'll cheat, they'll murder, they'll steal, they'll sell drugs, they'll cheat on their taxes. It's all about money. Everything's about money, 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 money. So they're going to love money. They're going to love themselves. They're going to love things that that money can buy. Amen. Boasters. Some might say so full of themselves. That's all they care to talk about. The world calls them narcissists. Everything they speak about winds up talking about them and it's always the exalting of them. But it's really a level of demon possession of, of demonic boasting. Come on somebody. Where it's just always about them. You even find this being delivered through the soothsayer to the modern church. I call it fleecing the sheep where the sheep are literally being sheared in the spirit and don't even realize it. Amen. By the soothsayers because it's a boasting gospel. It's all self-centered. It boasts in about what you are and what you have and the anointing you've got and what God's going to, boy, your ministry, you're going to be this and you're going to, oh, it's just always them swelling words that Jude warned us about. Amen. In verses 16, it puffs you up, fills you up, self-centered, self-exalting, proud. Some I say pride comes next. In the middle of pride, you got I. In the middle of sin, you got I, 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 proud, proud. They too proud to be corrected. They can't, they can't learn. Somebody say they just, they too proud. They know it all, amen. And the Bible said it in Psalms 10. I believe it's in uh, verses, uh, yeah, Psalms 10 there. It talks about, and it said, verses four, the wicked through the pride of their countenance will not seek after God. God's not in all their thoughts. Somebody say the wicked who are proud won't seek God. God's not in all their thoughts. So who are the proud? The double-minded. God's in some of their thoughts. He's just not in all their thoughts. They're the proud. Hello? And they won't seek after God. Somebody say it takes humility to have a prayer life. It takes humility. You have to humble yourself to seek God. That's why praying 
is not the fashionable thing to do in the modern church, but to have church and have revival services and screaming and hollering and shouting and prophesying, oh, that's the thing to do, amen. But you can't get that same crowd to join up in advance and pray, and that's all they do. Because you can't be haughty and, and seek the Lord. You can't be double-minded, amen, and seek the Lord. And so it's the same as being proud. Blasphemers. Somebody say blasphemers. That means they speak against authority. They, they, they don't think twice before speaking in judgment against even the authority of the rule of the word of God. If you don't realize it, oh, I wish you'd hang around me for a day one time and I'd just let you look at some of my social media links. Amen. Praise God at the stuff that comes at me. It is amazing. And blasphemous and blaspheming here, this ain't just talking about from the world. What's so shocking most of the time, because we don't marvel if the world hates us. Jesus, you know, he preached that to us. We marvel, though, when we have those that say they know him and they're blasphemous. Come on, somebody, and speak it against. I've been called names I couldn't even dare repeat to a sailor. Hello? And I wouldn't repeat them anyhow, because I'd be sinning. I mean, awful. I mean, the witches that attacked us in 2019 from up north come against the church attacking and trying to, that I had to have the law enforcement involved with. And there's no way that I would even allow it to be printed out and wrote out. I had to for the law uh, department, the, the officers and stuff, but I wouldn't dare. I'd, I'd scribble it out if it was anywhere else. I mean, it was that bad. Just blasphemous, blasphemous, blasphemers, blasting. Amen, the things of God. Blasting the preaching of the word. Always attacking, amen, what God is saying. And uh, they think nothing about it. Somebody say disobedient to parents. You blaspheme the church. You blaspheme the preacher every time he preaches what God says to preach. Somebody say you're so in rebellion in the heart of your children. They're the ones that's hearing you do it. Guess what? They're going to start disobeying you. If you challenge the authority God puts over you, guess what? You're the authority over them. They ain't going to listen to you. Amen. Somebody say disobedient to parents. And a lot of people say, yeah, that's the way the kids are now. They disobedient. That's a spirit. It's a spirit of rebellion. It's the same as, as witchcraft, the sin of witchcraft, 1 Samuel 15 and 23. But if there's a lot of rebellious children within, that lets me know there's a lot of rebellious parents too. You rebel against the rule and the ways of God. Somebody say expect nothing but rebellion from your seed. And let me go ahead and tell you, rules without a relationship produces rebellion. You need to have rules. Somebody say, a family that has no rules is unruly. You should have rules in the house, rules when you leave the house. You should enforce them rules faithfully, whether in the house or out the house. And they ought to know, daddy, mama, rules. And if we break them, we get the ruler. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You ought to be able to look at them sometimes and, and oh, whoop. Let's get back to the rule. Amen. Because, listen, if there's, if there's such a, you know, deception and a disobedience to parents, where are the parents at? Where are they at? Amen. And I'm not saying all's to blame on the parents, but listen, amen, you better, amen, hold your end to what God's gave you. You're going to be held accountable. Amen. And this spirit of rebellion, it, it breathes among the rebellious. Hallelujah. Brother Marvin, I just don't understand why my kids are just running from God. How long you been running from God? Hello? Mom and daddy saw you, or the kids saw mom and daddy on fire for God, and then mom and daddy backslide. And then you wonder why your kids all of a sudden start backsliding and they're going. Amen? Because we're the leaders. Somebody say if the leaders fall away, the followers are surely going to follow Amen. So disobedient to parents. And I've even seen this at the level of demon possession. Amen. Um, when you hear a kid in a store cursing their parent and telling them what they're going to do and what they're not going to do, I'm talking about they're almost the same size as their parent. You know where you'd find one of mine at? They done that. After they took the handcuffs off of it, they'd have to get them out from under the, on, off the floor. Bro, that's child abuse. No, it ain't. Hello? I'm talking about grown kids. I ain't talking about little ones. Hallelujah. And you can't wait till they get big. 
Of course, I ain't never I ain't had that problem. I'll give God praise for that. But you got to train them up in the way that you go. When they get older, they won't depart from it. Amen. Proverbs 22 and 6. That don't mean they're going to be not going to be perfect. And that don't mean that the blood that you saw while you was in your rebellion, rebellion that's flowing through your veins that's in theirs ain't going to try to come up. Amen. And take them over and do with them like it did with you. Amen. But I'm telling you, there's a God that can break the curse. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? My kids love me, but I hope they got a level of fear of me too. Hello? It's called reverence. Amen. I don't care how old anybody gets, I'm still going to be daddy. Amen. And I ain't compromising what I've lived by all these years to accommodate something you don't believe no more. At my house, this is the way we live. And you know, you don't compromise there because kids pick up on compromise quicker than anybody does. You can fool everybody around you, but you won't fool the people in your house. People you live with. Amen. So a lot of times people just focus on disobedient parents. Boy, that's right. What about the parents? What are, what are the parents doing? Amen. Hallelujah. You can't take them to church and drop them off and think they're going to, you know, figure it all out. You need to get in God's house. You need to get faithful to God. You need to give them an example to follow. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Kids at this time, they're, they're role models. Somebody they look up to shouldn't be some six-figured, uh, you know, income-making person that can throw a ball. Come on and get drunk on the weekend. Or sing some stupid songs and then because they got a great following somehow, if they bring up Jesus a little bit, people want to listen to them talk about Jesus and they lost as the devil is. Amen. Rather than hear the local preacher preach about Jesus. Amen. And I'm telling you, we, we, need, to, we need to step up in that, in, that, in that realm and it's stepping up with God. Notice he said the unthankful. Somebody say unthankful. Have you not seen in our society in the last several years this literally coming to pass? I have literally found myself now as I get older, I get a little bit more honorary, I guess, too. Or unafraid to say some things. Just just go ahead and, you know, where I used to, I just... But uh, I can't tell you the countless times, and I've had to do it here lately. You know, the thing in our society back in the day was, was when you went to somebody's place of business, you're the reason they have a business. And... They considered you valuable. They valued your business at their business so much, they would make statements more than once. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. We, we hope to see you again. We thank you. I've been watching people. I, I know it may not be always from the head up. It may just be employees. And we've, me and Lindsay even had to go and talk with management right then and there. Because, I mean, and you say, well, you're just taking it too far. But, you know, you, you, when they take your money and they act like they don't want to be there and, and, and then they're sharp with you or they're on their phone while they're trying to do business with you or, or they're cussing at somebody else or they're talking about this one or that one and, and speaking even in reference to black people. Not long ago, Lynn had to call a manager on a, on a white lady who was speaking like that in her hearing while she's right up there at the counter to another employee uh, just and using foul language. Lynn said, I just ain't going to put up with that. And I, so she called the management and Eventually, the management finally called her back and said, well, we confronted the lady and we know it had to be true what you told us because she cussed us out. And so uh, anyhow, she got fired and, and people say, well, you shouldn't be getting people fired. We didn't. And they did. But but the thing is, is here's the common thing. You know, you'll drive up and, and, and you, you give them their money and, or give them your money. They're, they get your money and it's theirs. And uh, whatever it is you bought and they giving it to you. I've had to say on more times than I can count. You welcome. I ain't stopped one time. I'd close the window. Nobody said nothing. Here's your stuff. Nothing. I went, I said, you're welcome. <laughs> and then I said, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Y'all remember that? I said, even old fashioned trash can lid, you can throw trash in it and it still wrote right there, thank you. <laughs> somebody said, thank you, goes a long way. Everybody just looked at somebody and said, thank you for coming to church. Tell them, say, I came whether you came or not. But tell them, say, it's good to see you. 
Tell them, say, it helps me to see you. I hope it helps you to see me. Tell them, say, if it don't, thank you and I. <laughs> thank you. No wonder folks can't say to Jesus, thank you. Thank God. They'll thank everything else during Thanksgiving. Boy, I'm just thankful. No, you ain't. It ain't thankful season. It ain't just Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving unto God. Somebody say there's a direction. There's the one we give thanks. Well, that's what we do when we pray before we eat. Well, brother, I don't know how to pray over a meal. Thank God for it and dig in. Be thankful for it. Amen. Golly, this ain't no steak. Ain't nothing but a slice of bologna. But thank you, it could be cardboard. Fry it, cut it up, grill it. I know it ain't good for you, but son, I like me a slice of bologna, son. Amen, especially in a frying pan with some grits and eggs. Hallelujah, I'm from the swamp. Amen. Yeah, some might say thankful. But notice right after being unthankful comes unholy. Unholy just means unlike God. Somebody say when we're not thankful, we're unlike God. So in everything, give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. First Thessalonians 5 verses 18. Amen. Hallelujah. Some might say be thankful is one of the top steps to being holy or being like God. Thankful. Come on, give him thanks. Can we just stop right now and give him thanks? Give him praise. Thanks be unto God who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15 and 57. Amen. Why do you see less and less thanks being given to God, even in his houses, coming stale and silent and quiet? Hallelujah. Because they're becoming unholy, unlike him. Why is the top reason? Yet we come to hear the word of God preached on this first day of the week, on this Sunday morning. Amen. The first day of the week, the Lord. Lord's Day, but somebody say welcome to a house of thanksgiving, a, a house of worship. We come, why? To give him thanks. And at the root of some of the reasonings why people don't make it to church no more, they're just unthankful. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Somebody say without natural affection. There's different words here that represent the word love, and I'm not going to get into all of them. There's like four different ones. But some might say without natural affection. This was also mean a demon possession where people, they just don't love people no more. They have no compassion toward anybody. They have no remorse in how they treat people, what they do to people. Some might say they're driven by darkness, by demons. Amen. And it's kind of like Matthew 24, 12 when Jesus says, because iniquity abounds, the love of many shall wax cold. Amen. Wax cold. The love of many shall wax cold. And it's not just a love toward other people, but it's really first a love toward God because they're lovers of themselves, not Him no more. So everybody say they love themselves above anybody else, including God. Amen. And so this is without natural affection. Amen. Praise God. They, they don't even love their own. They'll give birth and throw them in a trash can. Bort the unborn. That's without natural affection. That's demon possession, by the way. Amen. People are appalled, and they should be. When you look on the social screens of our times and see in the land of Israel where they have to blur out the scenes, amen, where terrorists, not militant warriors, terrorists, demon-possessed humanity can take infants, innocent, innocent, come on, infants into the streets and cut their heads off with a machete just because they're a Jew and rape women and prompt their naked, bloody bodies through the streets. Come on, somebody. We're, we're talking about inhumane. We're talking about non-human. We're not talking about animals. We're talking about demon-possessed people. Someone say without natural affection. Well, let me tell you about another unnatural affection. Hey, man, since 1973, there is close to 70 million plus babies, innocent. Hey, man, been slayed in murder mills called abortion clinics in these United States. Come on, it for the last 50 years. And there's people still that stand politically on stages and scream out the freedom to make their own choice to do what? Kill their babies. Well, friend, if it's wrong, 
wrong and it's murderous and it's demonic uh, to take a baby out of its crib in the middle of the night and take it out in the streets in the name of your religion and your so called God and cut their head off uh, come on somebody well friend it's just as worse and probably even worse uh, amen than to take a baby halfway out of its mother's womb uh, shove a syringe up in the womb behind its neck uh, and suck its brains out and then pull parts of its body apart uh, cutting its head off and arms off and throwing them in a trash bin uh, amen and they call it abortion and they call it a legal right uh, and a woman's right uh, somebody shout that is without natural affection that is demon possession terrorism on any level is demonic but the worst terrorism this world's ever seen is called abortion and the abortionists and the politicians with their pen that sign it into law and scream out on our streets in America it's okay to slay our own hey man make Hitler look like a choir boy come on somebody in the murderous acts that he did hey man during the holocaust somebody shout out some American holocaust hey man the worst place the most terrorized place to have lived in America in the last 50 years uh, has been inside of the wombs of women. Uh, amen. Come on somebody who believed uh, this demonic doctrine uh, that it was okay that it was your own right to kill your own baby. Amen. One of the most dangerous places to live in America in the last 50 years has been inside a woman's womb that believes that. Who has brainwashed that doctrine of demons through its political channels. Amen. Some will say that's terrorism too. That is without natural affection. There ain't no way. Nobody could take a baby. Innocent child, no matter whose parents what, and kill that little innocent baby for just nothing. Just for the sake of laughing and smiling at it. That is demon possession. Without natural affection. Uh, there's a revelation of a word love here without natural reflection that causes us to think about the romantic type love. Y'all know I'm going there, don't you? Hello? Somebody to say they ain't but one righteous love affection that's romantic. And it's Romeo and Juliet. Amen. It is Adam, it is Eve. Let's go even all the way back to the beginning. It ain't Adam and Steve and it ain't Romeo and, and, and Russell. Come on somebody, hallelujah. Amen, it ain't Juliet and uh, Joanne. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? It ain't Adam and Steve, it's Adam and Eve. It's a man who woke up after deep sleep after God took his rib out and made a wife for him. And when he sees God coming with her, he went, whoa, man. Hallelujah. I believe that's where the song of the church came from. I feel like something good is about to happen. I feel like something good is on the way. Look at your neighbor and say, we was on the way. That's how we got here. Thank God. Somebody ought to stop and give God thanks right there. Amen. Thank God that the first parents, amen, praise God, had a natural affection. Somebody say it's a natural affection. When a man desires to have a wife, when a wife or a woman desires to have a husband. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? Somebody say it's a natural affection. Sister Janice know who I'm talking about when we were sitting in the doctor's office before daylight the other day. And this man and his young son was in there and his son was about 26 or 27 and he was challenged in his mental capacity but he just smiled the whole time and everything that come out of him was just complete 100% honesty. Sometimes I'd rather be around someone like that because they're, they're not playing their game and you could tell they got a mental problem. Amen. But it was just so fun to listen to them and you'd be surprised how smart they were on some things they could just, you know, real quick on it and, uh, and just the way he talked, you know, it sounded like he was watching a black and wide of Andy Griffith. I mean, it was just, it, it, it was not, you weren't making fun of them. You was just having fun with them. I mean, it was, it was pleasurable. It was a delight. I mean, because it was all innocent and just humorous, but just, you know, just raw and real and, you know, humility all in it. And we were, we was talking with him and, and he was talking about, he, and, and they would, he would ask me a hundred times because he knew I was a preacher. He wanted, did I know this one? And I know that. And he named some girl he, he brought up and he, he called her name that she went to this church and he kept mentioning her he kept saying her several times about her name and uh and her last name, and I don't know if you know anybody with a last name like this I don't even know if that's you know, he, her last name was Lockie yeah 
And, uh, and I just interrupted him, cutting up with him. I said, I know why you keep saying her name so much. He said, why, he said, why is that? I said, because you like Miss Lucky. He said, I sure do. That's my girlfriend. That's what he said like that. <laughs> and his daddy said, boy, every girl you see, that's your girlfriend. I looked at him, I said, well, praise God, at least you're normal. <laughs> Amen. How many deer hunters in here? I don't know if it's on yet, but if it ain't, it'll be on for long. Come on, somebody, that old buck, his neck will swell up, and he'll go to grunting. Ah, you'll start seeing does run, let him run, because here comes big boy, he's after her. And if he's running another buck, he's trying to run him off and fight him. But he's running for that dust. See, some animals are more normal. That's why I said, don't sink the animal kingdom as low as some of these people's going. Somebody say, without natural affection. When a man wants to sleep sexually with another man, somebody shout, he's got a demon. When a woman wants to sleep sexually with another woman, she has got a demon. We're talking about demon possession. When males want to go, amen, and disfigure their bodies and mutilate their bodies, wanting to be a woman, and then a woman doing the same thing, wanting to mutilate her body because she wants to be a man. We're not talking about people with just mental issues. We're talking without natural affection. We're talking about demon possession. Only the demon possessed act out and think this way. Brother, are you saying homosexuals are demon possessed? Yes! So demon possession is a spirit of perversion. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? I watched a lady one night, a young girl, we was praying for him, the pastor, old school pastor. Amen. The girl was up there and they took the oil, they poured it in her mouth. Them demons come out of her. She was a lesbian. But when them devils come out of her and she got free, she didn't want to go jump back in the bed with another woman. Come on, somebody shot the devils come out of her. Hallelujah. If the Bible calls it an abomination, there must be a connection to demon possession somewhere. Amen. Because there is. People do these things. And I'll just go ahead and tell you, there, there's a spirit of whoredom. A man that can't stay sexually with his wife and he's got to run with every other one. That's a spirit of whoredom. They're demon possessed. Hello? A woman that can't have just her husband and she's got to have everybody else's. Amen. People called her Jezebel because Jezebel was a witch, but she was a whore, but it's demon possession. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? They're under the control of a demonic power and presence. Somebody shout, they need deliverance. They need the devil cast out of them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, some might say without natural affection. Some might say truce breakers. Truce breakers are covenant breakers. They'll tell you, I'm with you. God said, God said, God said. I've seen so many truce breakers come through here. I can't even count that high and, and have enough time to do it in one service. God said, God said, God told me. Some might say, when you say God said, you're talking about a covenant. God made a covenant with you. God said, God said, and they break their covenant. Somebody say they don't keep their word. Amen. Washington's full of them. Truce breakers. All right. False accusers. And it don't mean just accusers. They don't accuse with truth. Truth will accuse too. But truth accuses to bring light to the darkness and that that's wrong and that that's error. But it's false accusers. Amen. Uh, gossip could fall in the line of this too. And, and, and we're talking about a spirit. Incontinent. Incontinent. Am I saying that right? I might as well get some definitions here. Since I did write some there. Incontinent. I think that's how you spell it. Let me say it slower. Incontinent. Incontinent. Literally means unbridled, without control, powerless. It literally means without self-control. Somebody says demon possession. A lot of these words that I'm outlining to you, how it's going to be in the last days. Know this, God saying, know this. is how, Somebody say we're talking about demon possession. Most of it, not all of it. We're talking about demon possession. All right? And he says this. This is where I really want to come to. Somebody say fierce, despisers of those that are good. Fierce literally means savage, but it means driven by darkness. Driven by rage and an anger. 
when we talk about terrorism, when we talk about all this mutilation, this murder, these debolical things, things that makes us cringe even when we talk about it, you know, even in a month where so-called many that go to the house of God on Sunday morning are going to celebrate horror and they got all this imagery hanging in their yards of death. How in the world can they keep hanging that stuff up after having seen what they've seen, the carnage, amen, in the streets of Israel? People just playing around with the darkness and playing around with death. It's, it's, it's nauseating to believe that saints would even, you know, I, it don't make no sense to me. And it's just this obsession with death and, and the grave and darkness and evil and wickedness and, and pain. See stuff with swords drive through its head, pain and, and blood and, you know, all this gross stuff. It's gross darkness that the Bible talks about in Isaiah 60 verses 2. But this word fierce here literally just means uh, not, not like, you know, just an, a, a lion would be as an animal. But we're talking about demonic things. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 and 31, he said, I fought a beast at Ephesus. Now, did Paul, when he preached at the church of Ephesus, did he go wrestle a lion in the flesh, a literal beast no he's talking after the manner of men he went on and talked because they worshiped the goddess diana in ephesus which was a multiple naked breast image of a woman hey man some ought to say pornographic the revealing of breasts multiple breasts hey man and they would worship diana they would all these false gods and somebody say wherever that's at there's demon possession there's demonic sexual perversions they all go together and paul said when i went there to preach he said i run into that demon he was talking about fighting devils. He was talking about the demon possessed. In Mark 16, when it talks about, you know, you'll take up serpents. Praise God. He ain't talking about walking out there and finding a rattlesnake and picking it up and saying, whoopee, I got faith in God. Watch it. It won't bite me. No, we're talking about a old serpent. We're talking about demon spirits that has possessed people's lives. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? God said in the last days, right before the church is raptured out of here, these perilous times, the reason they're going to be so dangerous at the top of the list out of all these 19, people it's going because they become their own god their own idol they will love themselves more than it and so all these things follow as a repercussion as a domino effect of it and he said one of these things i believe it's about the 12th amen he said is fierce somebody say this is demon possession that word fierce above anything we'll preach out of second timothy 3 when you study it it is really revealing a demon possession when people can innocently just walk in and take people's lives kill them in cold blood for whatever their cause is some to say they are possessed with devils. The world and the news moguls of our times, they always get it wrong. They call them mental. They call them, you know, animals. They, they call them all kind of things. But somebody say, let's call it what it is. It is demon possession. So I'm trying to let you know there's going to be more demon possession manifesting on this earth right before the rapture of the church. All right? Somebody say they despise those that are good. This is also a level of demon possession. And notice the order. Fierce, murderous. Hello. You think about it. murderous, darkness, demon-possessed, demon-controlled people. And right behind it, you got despisers of those that are good. Some ought to say haters of the good doers. In the last days, there's going to be an exalting of the evil doer. Come on, and a despising, a hating of the good doer or the God doer. The one that does God's business. Why did you see in one, um, you know, view from the news on one day all the murderous acts taking place in Israel and then the next day on American college campuses and metropolitan cities uh, amen and in different countries of the world uh, all those stand up uh, in defense pro uh, the terrorists pro these murderous uh, amen individuals anybody hear the Holy Spirit because wherever the fierceness comes uh, the despisers of good follow and it reveals to us just how many terrorists we have in our country 
because if you can celebrate somebody killing babies and women and elderly people and just people in general anybody hear the Holy Spirit you got a devil and you're not only a despiser of the good it's because you love the evil you love the blood you love the death you love it you love it you love it and in the name of racism you're the greatest racism producer of any of them anybody hear the Holy Spirit when Black Lives Matter can put out the very next day after all this murderous stuff that went on in the nation of Israel beheaded babies raped women amen death of elderly people people laid dead everywhere killed in the middle of the night drug out of their house beheaded in the streets and then they can show amen a black image amen of a, a paratrooper amen coming down like these terrorists did on these innocent people at this music festival killing them all in cold blood amen glory to God amen in support of, of, of the terrorists somebody shouts you better be warned they're terrorists too why because they love each other and they hate the good but they love the evil hallelujah when they walk by in the streets of America and they and I won't dare do it holding their arm up like hell Hitler pro the acts the murderous acts that was done to, to Jews over a week ago friend be warned they're terrorists too the same demons that used those to do what they did they're walking around right here in America everywhere and if nothing else it has revealed to us just that you know Lord have mercy traitors you know a traitor is not just somebody who's you know a truce breaker a traitor they don't just break covenant with you they turn you into the enemy a traitor will turn you over to the enemy come on anybody here Holy Spirit I've had truce breakers come through here and I've had traitors come through here the traitors leave and they're possessed with witchcraft and they try to turn people on you they try to turn in well they speak curses they speak doom and death and destruction and amen. somebody say traitors traitors are those spies you know they 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 say they're one of you, but at the same time, they're spying on you to give information to the enemy. Somebody say traitors. Heady. Heady just means full of themselves, reckless, headlong, hasty. Somebody say in a hurry. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just infiltrated with themselves. It's another definition of, you know, pride and arrogance, but they're heady. They're, you know, strong headed rebellious come on somebody amen and uh, they can't be corrected somebody say high-minded high-minded means to raise the smoke literally means to have their head in a fog of smoke think about it high-minded in the spirit if you could really see the level of their nose it's tilted just like this full of themselves high-minded all right Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Notice it didn't say they didn't love God a little bit. It said they just love their pleasures more than they love God. When I see people going away from the presence of God for pleasures, these people are in danger of becoming any one of these. Somebody say, beware, be warned, know this. Amen. Ain't it amazing? All this is sandwiched between lovers of themselves and lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. Think about it. He said they have a form of godliness. I'm to say they're some of the most religious people you'll ever meet. They're ceremonial. They're religious. They got a form of godliness. That means they got a form, a shape, uh, an, an, an outward expression an outward form amen of what they say God is but there's nothing inward nothing from the inside out changes them some say they deny his power deny his power it means they rebel against his spirit they refute they refuse his spirit 
They just want a form of religion. They want a service that's predictable. They want to know when it starts and know when it ends. And by the way, the door still swings open on one accord by your own effort. Nobody's got you under house arrest. Hello? But they want it all predictable. They want it in and out. They want it clocked in. They want it clocked out. They want it all appeasing and pleasing to the flesh, catering to the carnal in the crowd. Amen. Somebody say they want the form of it. They want the outward shape of, shape of it, but they don't want the heart of it. They don't really want to get to the heart of it. Amen. And it's a routine. It's a religion. It denies his power. God told Timothy through Paul the apostle, and Timothy's a young pastor, because this message is to a young pastor, to the leaders. By the way, preacher, you need to be reminded of that. And he, why did God say this to the preacher? Because he wants the preacher to preach it. He said, from such, turn away. Somebody say, from such, turn away. Do you mean God told the young pastor Timothy through an apostle named Paul to tell God's people, turn away from the forms of godliness. Turn away from the religions that deny the power of the Holy Spirit, that deny him as a person. They just want the little outside religious form. Amen. The little predictable little ceremony. Everything's just a little ceremonial, right? Just a little, little fixed, little, little short time. Amen. And oh, I'm religious. I'm religious. There's going to be a lot of people in hell that were religious. Come on. They religiously approached God, but they never had a relationship with him. Amen. Somebody say this is a religion without a relationship. Amen. And if you're watching and you go into a church that looks like a corpse every time you go, turn away, turn away, get out of there. You better get out of there. If all they do is please you, but they don't ever prick you with the gospel, you better get out of there. You better run. He said, for of this sort are they which crept into houses. Somebody say they sneak in. Lead captive silly women laden. And that ain't just women. It's both sexes, man. Silly means just... Uh, you know, gullible, silly just means they have no depth of discernment in them. They just go with anything that feels good. Laden with sins, led away with divers' lust. Here they are. Here's the crowds. This is the religious crowds of the last days that are perilous times. Somebody say, this is why it's so perilous because they're ever learning. Boy, they might go and learn them a little something, but they're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Somebody say they go and learn about Jesus, but they never burn for Jesus. Somebody say they go and hear another story about him but they do not repent of their sins. They don't get right. Some ought to say they're religious. They're ceremonial. They're dead spiritually. On the outside they look like a whitewashed sepulcher but on the inside they're nothing but dead men's bones. Some ought to say these are the conditions of the end times. I'm on the end of verses 8. Now as Janice and Chambers withstood Moses so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Some I'll say it's a spirit of witchcraft in a religious form. Some ought to say they reject the preaching of the truth. Why? Because the truth don't always make you feel good. It'll, it'll get in your business. They don't want to hear that. No. They just want to be religious. And I encourage you in your own time to read the rest of the chapter all the way through verse 17 because the only antidote to combat this apostasy there's a lot of people going to miss the rapture that was ready for the rapture because of this. Because they've fallen into one of these categories. They've fallen into one of these, these areas. Amen. But by verse 14, he said, Continue thou in the things which you have learned and hast assured of knowing of whom you have learned them. You better know who it is you're learning from. And this is the danger. I'm closing. This is the danger of just running everywhere after anybody that says, Thus saith the Lord, and you don't know nothing about them. Paul says, you better know of whom you're learning these things. Amen. It's amazing. People overlook their local pastors that they've known a while and know, you know, how they live. And they'll just run after anything that just passes by that's got a crowd or a little, you know, feeling with it. Amen. And go after anything. Somebody say, you better know who you're hearing. You better learn not just from them, but you better know the ones you're learning from. Amen. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? And some people can't get to know who it is they're learning from because they're too busy floating everywhere else. Amen. Hallelujah. 
So, and then he starts talking about all the scriptures that, you know, is by the inspiration of God that's uh, profitable for doctrine, reproof, and correction in righteousness so it might perfect the man of God. So that's the antidote. Some might say continue in the word of God. When I see people who no longer have time to be taught the word of God and the word of God be preached to them, that people are in a dangerous place of falling into this snare just before Jesus returns to rapture his church. Somebody say it's the way it's going to look in the last days. And if you'll understand what I'm talking about here, Paul weren't just telling Timothy this is how it's going to look in the world. Because we see it looking that way in the world. But friend, it's looking that way in the church too. That's the dangerous part of it. It's the lukewarm Laodicean dispensation of the church that is rich and has need of nothing. Revelation 3.17, they don't even need God no more. They've learned how to professionally do this church thing. Amen. They no longer need prayer. They no longer need the manifestation of the Spirit. They no longer need the Word. Well, brother, I'm saved, but you know I don't need to go to church that much. I don't have to do all. Amen. And they've fallen into this darkness, this demise, this deception. And they're so in danger of defecting from the faith and not even knowing it. Amen. And the trumpet's going to sound. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But somebody say those that endure to the end, the same are going to be saved. Let me quote it. Matthew 24. 4, 12 and 13 you see it up there and because iniquity shall abound that's what 2 Timothy 3 is showing us sin is abounding everywhere sin's becoming more acceptable wrongdoing and evil doing is being exalted above the good doer anybody hear the Holy Spirit huh? the love of many because of that is growing cold they're falling out of love with God one another come on anybody hear the Holy Spirit huh? amen this is why they can do these horrific uh, amen acts against humanity amen there's demon possession he he said, but he, anybody going to be in the, but he group, I want to be, I let me butt in a little bit on this message. I want to be in the, but he, oh, that shall endure. Somebody say that shall stay in love with God. That can keep God first. That'll keep continuing in the things of God. Somebody say staying on fire, not waxing cold unto the end. Somebody say the same shall be saved. So not only let this. Be a beware to us today, because he said this also no. But let us let it make us aware at the same time to encourage us with endurance. Come on, somebody's for the end. If you've been thinking about quitting, I hope I've got between you and your quitting and scared you from quitting. Somebody say some preaching ought to scare you from stopping. It ought to scare you from backsliding. It ought to scare you back to the house of God. Scare you back into the will of God. Bro, that's a little scary, some of that stuff you're talking about. Good. Hey, man, maybe that'll empower you to endure. It does me every time I preach about him coming. Whether I'm preaching about the wickedness and the darkness and the wrongdoing and the apostasy that's in the church and the falling away on the other side, the other line of it, it makes me start thinking about, well, my God, everybody ain't going to be left. Everybody ain't going to be lost. They're still going to be a people that's faithful to the end somebody's going to make it he's coming back with somebody I don't want to be in that other crowd I want to be in this ready crowd I want to be in this rapture ready crowd the one that's going to be caught up that didn't get caught up hey somebody watching you've got caught up in this world you're going to miss the catching up of the church you better get back caught up in God's work God's house around God's people and God's stuff are you going to be left oh God play that song Brianna coming soon hallelujah and if you got to go you know where the dough is hallelujah but let me invite you to the door that's eternal his name's Jesus it's right here at the altar oh glory to God let's enter in somebody say he's coming Coming soon, Jesus, in all his glory, not just a savior, but a reigning king. Coming soon, and the whole world will be with me. Once he came to this old world of sin and sorrow, a humble 
humble babe in a manger in Bethlehem. But this time he's coming in all his power. Shout it out, he's coming soon Jesus in all his glory You know, if you really live like that You'd be the most encouraged believer on this people planet called earth How could you get so discouraged to want to quit If you really believe he was coming Come on, if you'll take to heart this message And any message that reveals about these last days and these end times Somebody say these ain't just perilous times They're powerful times Because the narrative of the gospel and the preaching of the word Don't end on a dark note It ends on the note when he appears And he comes again and catches away his church Church. Come on, somebody shout, he's the one that's going to rule. He's going to reign. Hallelujah. Not just a Savior, but a reigning King. He's coming soon, Jesus, and all his glory is here. coming soon oh you gotta be ready somebody say he's coming soon oh he's coming soon Lord I pray every one of us would endure to the end Lord how can we endure for he told what we're gonna have to endure Lord, you didn't say it was going to get any better. The highlight of the church is not living through the great tribulation and arriving one day in the great 1,000 year reign. No, we look to a day long before that when the Lord comes in the clouds and catches us away. Lord, prior to that day, we're going to see a lot of this evil take place. But Lord, it won't be the great tribulation. We don't have to see that. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God, as we hear this today, may it empower us with endurance to continue, to continue to learn, to continue to burn for God, to continue, as Paul said in verse 14 of 2 Timothy 3. Somebody say this message is to call the backslider back to get those who are in apostasy back into the kingdom and to get those who are in the kingdom stronger and to keep them continuing and enduring to the end. Come on. Hallelujah. Look at somebody beside you and tell them this morning and say, whatever you do, hold fast. Hold fast. Somebody say, because he's coming quickly. Tell them, say, don't let no man take your crown from you. Hold fast. That's Revelation 3 verse 11. Holy Ghost, I thank you for coming back. Mighty God, you're so worthy. Lord, I speak your blood over your people. Hallelujah. Speak your blood over your people, Lord. Help us endure to the end, Lord. Help us endure to the end. Lord, help us to deliver some of those who are in those sinful conditions and actions that we've even read and heard preached about this morning. Help us rescue some while we're enduring, Lord, to make sure they make it and not be left behind. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mighty, 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 mighty. Oh, be ready. Y'all see is coming soon. Somebody say he's coming. And 